Hey there, thanks for joining me on Tropical Weather Impact. It's Wednesday, August the 27th. Still not a whole lot to talk about out in the tropics, but coming up, we're going to talk about what the state of the atmosphere looks like going into September. We're going to detail a few spots that may be worth watching long term, like a two and three week outlook. And um, overall, no big stresses right now as we wrap up the month of August and head into September. Here in New Orleans, not a whole lot going on. Just getting ready for a couple of cool fronts and some rain. But here's what the overall Atlantic Basin looks like right now. That's still what's left of Tropical Storm Fernal. It really has been holding on, but still, we do think it's going to be dissipating in the coming days as it's moving northeast. Notice there's nothing around it. No land impacts expected. And elsewhere, things are fairly quiet. I mean, you don't have really anything going on out in the open waters of the Atlantic. The Caribbean is quiet. That's what's left of that tropical wave that was racing across the Caribbean a few days ago. This is still a frontal boundary and a new frontal boundary coming down may be worth watching into next week as you get occasionally get some low areas, a low pressure spinning up off of the fronts, but I really don't see any big indication that that's going to be a huge problem for anybody here. And there's a closer look at that frontal boundary. No organization to it, just some scattered storms along it uh, with it this morning. So far this season, we have gone through the F storm. Fair not, it's still out there, but I wanted to show you where all the storms have been so far this season. A couple of the earlier ones in the season, you may have forgot about Andrea was out to sea. Dexter out to sea. Chantal was the weak storm that moved up the east coast, produced some rain. Barry was a storm that didn't do much initially, but all that moisture from Barry caused that tragedy uh, over in Texas with the flooding. But so far, we've seen a lot of curving out to sea systems. Aaron being the most notable hurricane so far this season, being a cat five. But you can see the path here was going due west and then a curve out to sea. Now we still have a lot of hurricane season left. We hope this curve out to sea um, scenario continues to happen with any storm, but that's not always a guarantee. So what's been helping us out here has been, well, this big ridge that's been parked over the East Coast, and that's the pattern we have right now. That's the pattern we're going to have into the beginning of September. Now keep in mind, whenever you have this type of pattern, this is in the mid levels of the atmosphere. And so what's happening here with these troughs is your atmosphere, your trough digs down like this, comes up over your ridge, your ridge is like this. And so the ridge, the Bermuda High out here is what we call it. It's what's steering all of our tropical waves basically due west. The thing that keeps those tropical waves from ever getting to the United States are our big troughs of low pressure, like what's digging down over the east coast of the U.S. here. So that's essentially blocking anything from flying up to the U.S. Now, these types of patterns we have to watch sometimes because if you get anything down here, it can get pulled to the north. There's just nothing down there right now to get pulled to the north. And so that's why so far Aaron's curved out to sea, Farinal's turned out has turned out to sea and maybe additional systems trying to form in the future curve out to sea. We just got to keep that trough there and guess what? That trough is not going to be there permanently. The worst case scenario for something forming out here would be that ridge to extend further. So if you extended this red into the US, that blocks anything from curving out to sea. But right now this pattern is looking great as we head into at least the beginning of September. This is something interesting to look at. The sea surface temperature anomaly. All that the fancy way of saying what's the sea surface temperature compared to the average and anywhere in orange or in yellow, it's running above average. You can see in the Gulf here we're running above average for the most part by a couple degrees. This is what is that? The path of Aaron. So Aaron is such a big storm. It moves so slowly. We call that upwelling. So as that strong hurricane traveled over the Atlantic Basin, it upwelled all that cool water that's deeper and brought it to the surface. And this is why hurricanes exist. They act to disperse the heat from the ocean into the upper atmosphere and create a balance in the atmosphere. And so that's what hurricanes are trying to do. The stronger they are, they're trying to pull all that heat out of the ocean, send it to the atmosphere, disperse it, and bring back some equilibrium, which is what you got here. And now you've got this little cool spell of water. That will likely heat up over the coming weeks as we head to the peak of the season, but that's something interesting. Now let's talk about long term into September. So what you're looking at here is the Climate Prediction Center. They put out these two and three week outlooks where they analyze the atmosphere and try to determine what areas are most likely to see at least something to watch here. And this is the second week of our first week of September. So beyond seven days from now, they're thinking 
We may need to watch this area, but they're only giving it a very low chance of something trying to form. So I still think the Atlantic Basin as a whole is going to be fairly hostile to tropical systems the first week of September. That's the third through the ninth here with this outlook. You're talking wind shear. You're talking dry air intrusion. That's probably keeping things at bay. And the um, Madden Julian oscillation, just a feature that travels across the globe, it's going to be in an inactive phase through the first week of September. Now, we do think by the second week of September, also the peak of hurricane season starting on the 10th, things will naturally start to wake up. And this is going to be a zone where they're introducing a slightly better chance of some development. Again, this is over two weeks away, really two and a half weeks away. And so what we're going to be watching here over the next few weeks, we will start to see tropical waves. There's a current tropical wave rolling off the continent of Africa. It's probably not going to do much. The environment looks fairly hostile. But by next week and the week beyond that, the 10th through the 19th, it wouldn't be shocking if we are seeing the tropics wake back up like they were last week when we had air and when we had Fernand, all these storms trying to form. The Atlantic Basin tries to get back in a more active phase. Again, this is a long range outlook. There's really no details to be given. This is just some weeds of meteorology where we're seeing that the atmosphere may be a bit more hospitable here long term for something to try to form. But beyond that, not much to say. And as I've been saying, it would be weird if we weren't tracking something out here during the peak of the season. So I could show you this for the next probably 20 years and it would be accurate. The second week of September looking at this general area as hurricane season pushes into its peak. That's what's going on right now. Not a whole lot. No tropical threats to the United States the way it's looking right now through the end of August, even the beginning of September. So let's use the peace and quiet and enjoy it while we've got it. That's going to do it though for today's tropical weather impact on Wednesday, August 27th. I'll see you right back here tomorrow with the latest.